Hi, I'm Pat Thatcher. I'm Margaret Gifford. We work for the global real estate company, Sotheby's International Realty. Margaret, how long have you been in real estate? About 200 years. How about you? I'm um, coming up on it. What is the real estate market like right now, Margaret? Well, interest rates are very favorable. There's great inventory, and it is a good time for buyer and sellers. And you know, Falmouth is so wonderful. Not only is it a beautiful place, but there are so many outdoor activities, cultural events, and opportunities to volunteer. Isn't, Isn't Falmouth, Falmouth great? great? Remember, WC Communications is your printing team. We are calm and cool under pressure. You can call us at 508-563-7366 or toll free at 1-800-696-7303. So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting Monday, April 23rd, 2012. As you can see, our chair, Pat Flynn, is not here. Let's wish her the speediest of recovery so we can see her again in the near future. And in the meantime, I, as vice chair, will run the meetings until she returns. I'd like to start out the evening tonight with um, something a little different. Um, Ms. Adelaide Cummings was an, named our Poet Laureate at our last meeting, and in, um, in response to being named Falmouth's Poet Laureate, she wrote a poem, and I'd like to share it with you. She's given it to us. She's written it to the Falmouth Board of Selectmen. It seems an honor far too great to be anointed Laureate. It's in verse I find release on my path to inner peace. For I believe we're each a part of an harmonious whole where each and every one of us has a special role. We humans above all are blessed since we, possessed of soul, must seek and find purpose. Make this our major goal. Oh, the pleasure you have loosed. You've given my spirit such a boost. Filled with, filled with thanks, I now rejoice and hope you'll never rue your choice. It's from you. Adelaide Cummings. Thank you very much, well Ms. Cummings, our Poet Laureate. Fine poem. So, on that note, then, um, we have to vote to accept a donation from the Falmouth Road Race Pledge Committee. Pledge of Allegiance. Um, new sitting chairs, I'd rather not tonight. Thank you. Um, to accept a donation from the Falmouth Road Race Committee to the Falmouth Fire Department, 
donation account in the amount of $23,399. And I believe we have some road race people here to discuss what this, um, what this donation is for. Fire department representative. Or, or a fire department representative also. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Scott Gelfi from the Falmouth Road Race. Michael Small from the fire department. Mm -hmm. um, and the, um, the donation is um, earmarked for a emergency vehicle um, that uh, uh, Deputy Small can uh, perhaps tell you about. But it's a um, vehicle that they came to us and, and requested. I know that uh, the fire department has requested a grant for it. We're denied. Um, this vehicle was integral, inter integral in um, saving someone's life last year um, in the road race, as they uh, I think you uh, had one um, lend it out to them for the race last year. Um, and so um, I guess it's a vehicle that um, would really come in handy with beaches, uh, crowd situations, the street fair, fireworks weekend. So um, they brought the request to us. Um, we passed it, and um, it's consistent with our mission of giving back to the community. So there you go. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for either the road race or Deputy Small? Kevin? Um, I have a couple of questions. Uh, do we have a picture of it, number one? We have five pictures of it. Okay. <laughs> and then my, uh, my other. My other question is really not a question, but um, in the effort to be consistent, fair and consistent, the effort to be fair and consistent, I know that I've brought up on several occasions recently about us accepting grants or applying for grants without having a public hearing. And this is, in fact, a public hearing, which is, which is fine. It passes that muster. However, we need to ask what are the reoccurring costs with these type of things. Um, if this vehicle were to break down or go out of service, does the town then, uh, we've been on the hook before in years past, we bought it, we got a vehicle donated to us uh, in a certain department. The vehicle was no longer of use, but then we had to replace the vehicle, but then it becomes the town expense. Um, I'd really like to defer this to let the finance committee take a look at it, because I think that's the prudent thing to do. We've discussed, as this board, about what is, in fact, Article 4 at town meeting, and it's typically on every town meeting warrant. It's not against the, this particular item, but I think that we have to make sure that we're, when we're talking about grants and when we're talking about accepting things, that we have to understand, uh, is it, in fact, free? I wholeheartedly appreciate the mission of the Falmouth Road Race. I think this is a great thing, but um, I'm not shooting the messenger. I'm just trying to make sure that we become fair and consistent about how we accept grants and whether or not they have any additional costs as we move down the road. You might have already looked into that, but I, I, I'd like to be able to maybe give this a week, talk to people on the Finance Committee, take, let them take a look at it, and then we come back and make a vote to whether we accept it or not. Um, the only other question I would have is, if you borrowed it last year, is that still accessible to the Falmouth Fire Department in, in that type of scenario? Where, where did you guys get it? It came from the State Fire Marshal's office. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's a first come, first serve. They happen to be available that particular weekend. Whether or not they would ever be available okay. again, I, I don't know. And is this vehicle an on-the-road vehicle? In other words, uh, we can put a license plate on it, we can run it down the road? Or are we going to have to buy a trailer for it than to trailer? It, it, I, I don't believe the intention is to put it on the road. We have sufficient trailering capability for it already. Okay. So that, that, that's not an issue. Okay. Okay. As far as the legality of it being on the road, I, I don't know. I'm not sure of that. I, I don't know that either. That's why I'm kind of asking that question. I mean, it's an emergency vehicle. I think that I think it's a little bit of a different beast. than. But as far as the trailer goes, we have sufficient trailering capability for okay. it. Okay. Frank, did you have something to ask? Uh, yeah, along those same lines, I agree with what's been said by Mr. Murphy that our agenda says it's to vote and vote to accept a donation but it doesn't mm -hmm. specify that we're going to be getting a free puppy is what this seems like and I, I, again with as with what Mr. Murphy said very much appreciate the gesture um, I know that the fire department could probably use the equipment but 
once we own it, then we have to take care of it. And there's so much that's been said about the cost of maintaining the roads, the cost of maintaining equipment. And I know the fire department could probably use new air tanks. Um, I know that's been high on the list for a long time. Um, so I would like to see this uh, run past the Finance Committee. And, and actually, if I may, uh, Mr. Suso, do we know if the Finance Committee has been consulted yet? That's going to be my question. To the best of my knowledge, uh, Selectman Putnam, uh, they have not. But I will make certain that this is brought to their attention if it is not already. Do we know if they're meeting this week or before our next meeting? Don't know. Don't know about that. Okay. So um, if we can, we can put this on next week's meeting, if that's fine with everyone, if the Finance Committee has a chance to look at this. But I think we, it's also incumbent upon us to remember that this isn't, I mean, I know that we've had the discussion about the free puppy, and I know from having sat on Finance Committees and seen boats being given to the harbor master that when the boat, when the motor dies, suddenly it's a very big expense. But I think this, um, this piece of equipment has some, some great value that can be used specifically in Falmouth for some very specific issues. And, I, and I'm hoping that, that the, the good and the benefits of this value will outweigh the, um, any potential um, lifetime, lifespan of the, um, of the vehicle. Do we have any idea how long these things last? Uh. No. Nothing lasts forever, but yeah. I mean, long time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just I thought I was reading David. something that said 10 to 12 years. 10 to 12 years. I know yeah. it depends on how hard it gets used, yeah, but it's right. you know it's not going it's not going to have a tough life. You know, I, uh, Madam Chair, if I may, I, I'm 100% behind this. Mm -hmm. You just happen to be the first one out of the gate since town meeting and Article Four which was always there. We really clarified. Sorry. It's just a, it's, you're going to probably wind up with it in the end anyway. I just, there's a procedure that the finance committee felt they'd like to be kept on board with any, they can look at it so they'll know if a few fiscal years down the road they're going to need something, if there's like training involved in it or anything. They just want to know the bottom line. That's all this is. And uh, you just happen to be the first one. But uh, since town meeting, since we discussed Article 4, but this is a great addition. I'm sure it'll work out in the end. But this Who would they direct their questions to? Well, whoever, uh, probably your chief, maybe. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to go in front of them. Or at least if Julian brings it to their attention, uh, they may uh, just get in touch with your chief and ask a few questions that they need to know. Any future costs involved in it? Is there any overtime and training, that type of thing? That's all they want to know. So that's and, all. And I'm assuming that. I'm, I'll have no chance of persuading any of you if I point out that it's a donation and not a grant. <laughs> no, I won't go anywhere. Kevin, quickly, um, please. <laughs> and it, it, in, in the fact that I agree with, uh, with, with what everyone said, and, and I do apologize. You know, I, I, you just happen to be the first group that's come forward with one of these free puppies, as we've been talking about for this fiscal year. And uh, we want to make sure that we're fair and consistent. Appreciate the offer. I mean, uh, when someone's going to donate twenty-three thousand, twenty-four thousand dollars to the town, and, and and in a direct benefit to what they would use it for, uh, you know, I, we have to stand up and take notice and say thank you. However, we also have to make sure that there's no reoccurring cost. I will say to Brent's comment that we we need air tanks, but. You know, when you're making a donation, if, if you're, you know, making a donation that you want a handicap ramp at Old Silver Beach, you don't want them to take that money and buy trash barrels somewhere else. So I, I appreciate the idea that, that it would be something that would be utilized, too, in a small part for the Falmouth Road Race. So uh, I'd make a motion that we continue this, uh, not with a date certain, only because we'll give the matter of time to the Finance Committee to take a look at it and then put it back on a very quickly so that I'm sure that we can get through the procurement process. Okay. Yeah, so we'll a second for that? Second. Okay. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Or no. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you gentlemen. Much. Thank you for your patience. Okay. So moving on. Next on our agenda, we have a proclamation that is to be given to um, Mr. William Huff. Uh, citizen of the Year, and we are going to have Mr. Jay Zavala from the Family Chamber of Commerce present it. Care to read this into the record, Mr. Mr. Zavala? Um, I'd be happy to, but of course I would appreciate it if the uh, if a member of the Board of Selectmen would do so. It's a proclamation that that I wrote uh, specifically with uh, 
the Board of Selectmen's in mind for the signature, and the presentation, the formal presentation, will be at the Chamber's annual dinner and awards banquet. If you'd wish okay. me to read it, I'd be more than happy to. I, I can read it, or Brent, would you care to read it? I Here can you if you'd like. We've got three pro proclamations tonight, so <clears throat> plenty to go around. Thank you. This is the Falmouth Chamber of Commerce 2012 Outstanding Citizen of the Year. Whereas the Falmouth Chamber of Commerce annu annually acknowledges and pays tribute to a citizen of the town of Falmouth who has made a lasting positive impact on the community through participation in a broad scope of activities and whose commitment to the town has been demonstrated by many years of service beyond his or her profession. And whereas William H. Huff has been an outstanding citizen of the town of Falmouth, Massachusetts, and New England, and well known for all of all and well known to all, excuse me, for his tireless and widespread accomplishments and contributions to the betterment of society. And whereas William H. Huff is a champion of local nonprofits and charities over the years, has shown unending dedication and devotion to advancing the principles of philanthropy in the town of Falmouth. Today, under the stewardship of Mr. Huff, the, Fal the Enterprise Community Fund, begun in 1994, raises money for the Falmouth Service Center, which has become a yearly tradition. This past year, the fund raised over $172,796. Mr. Huff is on the steering committee for the Falmouth Prevention Partnership and is a former member of the Falmouth Service Center Board of Directors. He is also president of the Woods Hole Foundation. And whereas William H. Huff over the years has continuously, continually, excuse me, generously and silently supported countless civic endeavors that go unreported, though not unappreciated, and as the Preserve America Initiative and so many others, and whereas William H. Huff's many accomplishments and contributions singularly and collectively are memorialized in the minds of those he has touched and chronicled on the pages of organizations across this town, and as he continues to make a difference in the town of Falmouth, we do herein, herein after, I'm sorry, it's a little scratched out here, we might want to reprint this, uh, that this gentleman w is worthy of high praise and great recognition, and now therefore we, Mary Pat Flynn, Melissa C. Freitag, Brent Putnam, David Braga, and Kevin Murphy, a selectman of the town of Falmouth, by the authority vested in us to proclaim William B. Huff, Falmouth's 2012 Outstanding Citizen of the Year. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Four in favor, none opposed? I do not believe he is. Okay. Madam Chairman. Excuse me. You were I was on. just going to ask, uh, um, would, could you give us the date that this would actually be uh, presented to Mr. Huff? Thank you, Kevin. The, uh, the proclamation will be presented at, formally presented at the Chamber's 98th annual uh, meeting and banquet, uh, an awards banquet. Uh, other recipients uh, also will be for professional excellence, Joseph Valley, for community service, Sandy Cuny. For the Chairman's Award, uh, Mr. Don Hoffer will be recognized, and there will be a special recognition for Mr. Bob, uh, Bob Roderick. Uh, the event will be on Thursday, May 10th. The location is the Seacrest Beach Hotel. It'll be from 5.30 to 8 p.m. Um, a wonderful menu has been set up by the uh, Seacrest, and of course, we would invite all the citizens of Falmouth to participate. Forward to that evening. I'm sure it'll be a wonderful evening for all. Thank you. Fine job for Mr. Huff. Unfortunately, Pat isn't here. But she can sign the back of the Okay. Thank you. Great. All. Thank you very much, Jay. Have a nice evening. Okay. So on to the next. Thing. So now at 7:15, we're three minutes late. Sorry about that. We have a, um, a public hearing. Um, let it be known that tonight the Falmouth Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing under Section 240-77 Wetlands Regulations of the Zoning Bylaws of the Town of Falmouth on April 23rd, 2012 at 715 in the Selectmen's Meeting Room, Falmouth Town Hall, on the application of the Town of Falmouth for the proposed 10-year comprehensive permit for dredging and beach nourishment projects to consolidate and manage 25 sites associated with maintenance of the town's waterways, harbors, and salt ponds. Interested parties may review the file on this hearing at the Selectman's office. That's per order of us. And I believe we have a couple of people here tonight in the audience. Um, somebody from the Woods Hole group, and I've just blanked on her. Greg Frazier, uh, Leslie, uh, Leslie Fields. Leslie Fields from the uh, Woods Hole group, and Greg Frazier, our Harvard, Harvard Master, is here also to speak on 
this initiative that I believe you've spoken to us before about this, but this is finally the application moving forward. So, thank you. So, hi, thank good you evening. very much. I'm Leslie Fields with the Woods Hole Group, and um, just very briefly, I'll describe what this is all about. It's, it's a project to consolidate all of the dredging and associated beach nourishment projects that the town performs under one permit. So um, these are projects that are done by the DPW in the salt pond areas along the south shore, as well as projects that are performed by the Waterways Committee and the Harbor Master's Office um, to maintain the harbors and inlets for navigational purposes. There are about 25 projects in all, project sites in all. I have pictures of them here. Um, I wasn't really going to go through each site. You know, if you have specific questions about anything, please, you know, myself or Greg can answer those questions. All the work is work that's um, been permitted in the past. Um, it's maintenance work. So it's, these are projects that you have seen in the past and approved. Um, so that's, that's pretty much, you know, what I'd like to say and certainly open it up to questions unless Greg would like to add something else. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I, I, as you've mentioned, we've seen this before and it's nice to see it coming perhaps to some kind of fruition here. Um, questions from the board. Kevin. Um, is, is, are these extensions on current permits? Are these new permits that we're looking for? It's all, um, and they're new permits. So we, we already received an order of conditions from the Conservation Commission and, I'm, and, and those are typically good for three years, but we did get um, a five-year permit from the Conservation Commission for all these per projects. Okay. Um, and then we also filed with DEP Shop 91, DEP Water Quality, and the Army Corps. So the Army Corps is good for five years, Chapter 91 for 10, and Water Quality for five. So um, some so permits have longer lengths than the others, but they're all brand new permits. All right. Is there a potential that at the end of that five years we could ask for extensions on some of those permits? Yes, we'd, yes, there to, is to, that provision. To get to the point of the 10 years for the DEP permit? Correct, okay. correct. Just a very quick question. I've been visiting a lot of the beaches lately, and especially um, the west end of Minot Beach. Yes. And this is included in this, the west end, and it's been approved by the CONCOM? The west end is in our application, was in our application of the Conservation Commission, but when we got the order of conditions, the order of conditions um, did not allow placement of dredged okay. place, uh, material to the west of Bourne's Pond entrance. So in other words, there will be no beach nourishment west of Bourne's Pond as of now? What is that? Is as of now. Is there a chance that could change? I don't know if you've been down there. It is. Yeah, I've been, I, yeah. I have been down there. Yeah. It's, it's really... I mean, everything um, placed in November of 2008 is now gone and then some. That's why I was... Yeah. Greg, maybe you can answer uh, that. Greg, Sorry. Good evening. We, we are allowed to, to place on the, on the east side of just the inlet but nothing on the west side of the inlet. And the Con Conservation Commission has made it very clear that until they have time to evaluate what's happened to some of the sand and the effects of the interior of the pond, they didn't want any more sand going on the west side. So is it something we'll be revisiting? Yes, but I think it'll be in conjunction with the uh, possibly uh, um, dredging of the inside channel. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other, Kevin? I just have a comment that uh, Years ago, um, we did these types of dredging permits, and we would let them lapse, and then we would have an opportunity to go back in and dredge a waterway. We didn't have the permit in hand. Uh, this was the, the best planning that I've seen under the waterways uh, group, and Greg, we should take our hat off to you to make sure that when and if we need to dredge a, a waterway, a, an inlet, that we have the permits. That's that's what takes most of the time. Um, we we all know that uh, you know the board of selectmen have uh, set priorities, and and one of the top priorities is our beaches and waterways. And in fact, uh, this is a great step. And that's why I asked the question: Could we get extensions on these permits? Because in the years past, we let them expire, and we had to start from day one, which is much more cumbersome than starting to just get an extension on permits. Uh, I thank you, and I, I think you did a great job. I'll just second that, that, that the Greg applied for a grant from the state to, to 
have this permitting done and they received that grant and um, so we're able to hire us to do the work and so I, I would just second that. Okay. It's good work. Although all the work isn't done yet because it looks like you still have a number of time of year restrictions that you're going to have to play around with or be mindful Correct. of. Correct. Sure, yeah. Throughout the whole project. So um, any other questions from the board? Oh, Heather has a I just have a comment and it's to reinforce what Selectman Murphy said and I think this is just a great example of um, kind of the whole municipal process working where the, the Board of Selectmen did set a strategic plan and priority for coastal resources and specifically endorsed the Waterways Committee and the Harbor Master's goal of creating a multi-year, multi-property permitting process. Um, and we were able to work with both Don and with Greg to, to make that happen. And, and I only have a, a, a minor understanding of the amount of work that goes into making something like this happen, but it is really a, a significant uh, work effort both by the staff and the consultants that they bring on board. So I think this is just a good example of where that type of planning uh, at, at all levels pays off. Great. So do I have a motion? Um, do we have a, a specific plan that we're going to be? Uh, uh, we have the order of conditions. Should we go by the order of conditions, Dave, from the Conservation Commission? Or are we just making a motion? We've got an application as of March 16, 2012. Oh, public comments. Yeah. Is, is there any, excuse me, before we move any further, since this is an open hearing, is there anyone here who would like to speak in favor of this plan? Of this application no anyone who'd care to speak against this plan okay we've got a couple of people here so we'll start with this gentleman we'll work our way across the room please if you could please go to the speaker and identify yourself for the uh, public at home thank you madam chairman my name is henry herman uh -huh. and Thanks i'm a line. permanent resident of a house on surf drive in the corner of bywater court uh -huh. um, i uh, want to stress that i'm not here to oppose the project as a whole Obviously, anybody who lives in Falmouth knows that we need good beaches. And so I just want to make it clear at the very beginning that I have no issue with the town and, and we think the beach is in good hand. I do have a very specific issue, and I've had one for the longest time, three years ago at the uh, Conservation Commission with Woods Hole Group and particularly with Ms. Fields on a personal level. I'm sure she's a very nice lady, but professionally, I have a continuing issue with her on a matter involving the access pass to the dunes on Surf Drive for the residents there. Uh, I took the liberty of submitting the written, three-page written uh, um, submission that I made to the Conservation Commission, mm -hmm. and I gave it to the Secretary of the Selectmen um, last uh, week, and she said she would uh, include it in the package which basically uh, lays out what my concern and many of my neighbors' concerns are, at least one or two neighbors who are here today. The issue is, if you nourish the beach on Surf Drive, as I pointed out in my submission, the plan that Ms. Field, that Woods Hole submitted and it's, uh, I don't know by heart, but we referenced it in my written submission. Mm -hmm. The work plan does not show the individual access paths, just omits them, and shows a, l a continuous line of dune footage on Surf Drive as the line of work for the contractor who's going to be depositing sand. We had a real issue with the Hoods Hall Group three years ago, when they actually put a proposal before the Conservation Commission to close these paths. It's an ideological issue, ladies and gentlemen. They feel that they have to be closed. We don't think that the environmental concern of these few very narrow paths warrant not only inconveniencing residents, but we had lengthy testimony before the Conservation Commission of elderly, frail people, he was walkers, who wouldn't even be able to go on the beach if those were closed. Of people with little children who said, we're not gonna allow you, our little children to walk all the way down to the bathhouse in the summer with that traffic if we can't just ferry them across quickly into these pathways. There's no reason 
to endanger the closure of these paths. Now, as I submitted in writing, there's two issues that I'd ask you to consider. Should they be closed? And I've already addressed that. And may they be closed? At least one of the pathways is the subject of a land court decree before World War II, uh, which provides a land court deeded access pass across Surf Drive, across the dune, to the beach. Uh, may I approach the board? This, <coughs> this is from the land court records. In addition, we think that there are prescriptive easement rights to some of the abutters, to some of the other little pathways. So that's the legal issue. The public policy issue is they shouldn't be closed at all, and there's no need to close them. Now, what is the problem? I had a meeting with the uh, administrator of the Conservation Commission last week, Jennifer. She was very helpful and gracious, and she said she would go out there with the contractor and put stakes at the outward entrances, the beach entrances to the uh, pathways to make sure that they don't get filled. And we appreciate that. The second issue I raised in writing that I repeat is this. I have quite, I'm not a scientist, but I have quite a background on beach dynamics issues. I had the honor of being with Woods Hole uh, Oceanographic for three years as a visiting investigator. If you deposit this amount of sand on the beach, you're invariably going to get a large deposit of wind-driven sand that you don't have now into these pathways. You can almost do a computer algorithm. Invariably, a side effect of this perhaps laudable plan will be that in due course, the little narrow pathways will be filled with drift sand from the newly nourished beach sand that's going to be deposited. Woods Hole Group, Ms. Fields, will invariably say, that's mother nature, that's a natural process. And I say nonsense. If you deposit a large amount of sand on a beach and Mother Nature has its due and piles it into those pathways. That's not a natural process. So I would be very reluctant to appeal this to Boston, to the state. I really, the last thing I and my neighbors want to do is to get in any way obstructive to this plan. I asked the Conservation Commission to impose minimal conditions on this. They didn't. I have the oral assurances from the administrator that she, at least at the outset she will go and state them, and we appreciate that. But I ask the selectmen to at least once and for all end this ongoing dispute about these little pathways. And I conclude by saying, we, I think we all know that old Beatles song, whisper words of wisdom, let it be. That's what I say to Woods Hole Group let it be, leave these pathways alone, let's move on. So I would respectfully request that you impose minimal conditions that they cannot be obstructed at the outset and that the uh, people, the town employees who are charged by you to maintain the beach from time to time make sure that drift sand does not um, obstruct the um, pathways. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments, sir. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Could I just comment a little bit? I, I want to put this in a perspective of what we're trying to do. It, I am not aware of the issue that with paths because I I don't deal with that. I deal with the the harbor and the and the dredge spoils basically uh, being put on the beach itself, and then the county comes and levels it. Mm -hmm. So there, there, there's very little movement of the kind of sand we're talking about. There was some on a much larger 40,000 cubic yards. The, the, the sand that would most likely be going to sand be uh, uh, Surf Beach is coming from Falmouth Harbor. We typically get 2,000 cubic yards right. or less out of that inlet a year. That's a very small amount of sand. So when that sand is spread on the beach, you know, in, unless it's put in one spot, you barely know dredging took place. Um, and th that's evident by going to any of the inlets that we do. You know, there, there's not a large sand pile like you people have come to, you know, view Minot. That that's just doesn't happen. 
Um, so I, I think, uh, while I certainly understand the issue, uh, I, I don't think this particular project will have any effect whatsoever on the paths. If I may point out to the board, too, the, um, the, the um, deed restriction or the, the, the right of way that was, that was presented to us, the measurements from 1940 have 210 plus feet of beach from Surf Drive Road down to the shoreline. And I'm guessing that there's nowhere near 210 feet worth of beach there right now. So if anything, the sand that will be deposited will, if anything, start bringing it back to where it was. You know, we, I, I, I can but, certainly And if work. I may also add yeah. to the, um, the um, special conditions by the Conservation Commission, do say that no vegetation shall be planted and no fencing shall be erected in the areas of beach nourishment. So there won't be any blocking off to, to actually encourage the growth of dunes. We, we, the way that the, the, the cutter head works and the way the, the dredge throws the water onto the beach, we, do, we don't get that far up because if we do, then mm -hmm. we undermine the dunes that are there. Mm -hmm. So we're very careful not to go too far towards the planted areas because otherwise we do get in a, in a situation where we're forced to go back in and replant and it's very expensive. So we make sure that that doesn't happen. Thank you very much, Greg. Another comment yeah, from the audience. Um, perhaps we can let everybody speak first and then. Um, next, sir, please. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Steve Karras, over by Water Court. And basically, what I'm, I would say is I'd, the same thing that Mr. Herman said that I would oppose any of the beach paths being access paths being closed at all. Uh, my wife has uh, arthritis and if we're right across from the beach and the path and for her to have to walk uh, or even me to walk with her all the way down to the beach house it, it would not she wouldn't be able to go to the beach at all. So uh, I would oppose that and uh, as far as putting sand in to make a larger beach as you had just mentioned about the 200 feet, uh, I have no opposition to that. And that's, that's all. Thank you. Mr. Hoffer, please. I think I can. I was present, <coughs> Don Hoffer, beach superintendent. I was present probably seven years ago when we were working on a beach management plan, and this subject came up. This subject has no bearing whatsoever on this particular thing, this uh, proposal here. Those openings in the dunes have been there in the last umpty ump years. Since we did our beach management plan, they were eliminated. From a practical point of view, it'd be great to close them off because when you have a storm, this is where the ocean blows through. And in fact, in a perfect world, you'd make those pathways diagonal to the beach. That way there you do have some protection. Right now when you have that perpendicular opening, there's absolutely no protection for these people who are living in, you know, abutting it. But to the best of my knowledge, and uh, Leslie, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think the, the, this is, that is not an issue in this particular uh, program that you're looking at tonight. Thank you, Mr. Hopper. Anybody else? Sir? If you care to come to the microphone, please. Please identify yourself for the... How are you? My name's Rick Lawton. Um, I live at 541 Minot, and my wife is with me. We're at the house uh, which most abuts the west of Leander Minot. Western. And I must say from the outset that I'm not opposed to the permit. My comments don't have anything to do with the permit, but I thought it was the proper forum to bring up the comments about nourishment and so forth, but to steal a term from Elizabeth Taylor, she told each one of her eight husbands, I won't keep you very long, so that's, <laughs> I, I don't intend to do that. Um, but what I would like to say is, for the last two years we've lived at 541 Minot, which abuts the, the, um, uh, the westerly end of the Minot Beach, and we've seen a tremendous amount of erosion. And I've actually talked to Mr. Hoffa, Don, I've called him in the morning, and we've had a conversation because in the morning over the last six or eight months, it's like someone let the water out of the turtle pond. Mm -hmm. um, Bowen Pond is essentially going to be dry and we'll be able to walk across it. So 
and we've talked to we, one of our neighbors, Joanne, she's been there for 40 or 50 years. She's the local historian for us newbies. And she's told us that over, you know, she has seen the beach rebuilt a number of times. Um, so I come from a background, I'm an attorney. I work in the South Shore of, of, of Boston and I travel off the Cape every day. But I had the pleasure of, for the last five years I was on the Board of Trustees at the University of Massachusetts for the five campuses. And I was involved in a number of, of projects. And I know we have a 2.6, or we had a $2.6 billion budget. And the University of Mass Dartmouth is very aggressive on all these erosion matters, you know, um, tidal, um, uh, energy, and a variety of things. And I think last year they operated on close to $400 million in endowments and grants. And um, because I think that the n whole idea of nourishment is a temporary creation of a sand reservoir, which pushes the shoreline seaward. And it obviously isn't working near our house because the, I, the ocean's got its own mindset and it wants that road. And um, I think as Selectman Braga said, if nothing is done and we do what's called a retreat, you know, when you start moving things away and let the ocean take its, you know, make up its own mind, I think that that would be wrong. But I also think that nourishment isn't appropriate either. What I'd like to see is that there are some new technologies called undercurrent stabilizers that Don might be familiar with that have saved erosion problems around the world. And it's a, a, a company, an international company based in the United States. And I'll, I'll give Don the information. I sort of just started fooling around and looking at it. But what I'd suggest is that we have a congressman, Bill Keating, and we also have a Senate president, Therese Murray, who are very involved with the budget and the state. And these are, you are our constituents. And they do one thing. They vote because they want to get reelected. And it would behoove, I think, the town of Falmouth, if they didn't reach out to Congressman Bill Keating's office and the Senate President and ask them to bring this up with the University of Massachusetts and see if there wouldn't be an initiative for the Dartmouth campus to take a look at erosion problems affecting the Cape and in particular Falmouth and look at alternatives to nourishment because nourishment is not working on the west side of, of Monarch Beach as the selectman said. There are technologies that can be in place, and I think this would be the first step towards maybe getting federal money, because money makes the world go round, and this, we obviously don't have the money to fix this problem, but I think the sooner we do this, the better. Um, so I would just make that suggestion that somehow, and again, it doesn't have anything to do with this permit. It may be initiated from Don Hoffa's office, but I think that the town should make a contact to the congressman and the Senate President and see if they can't get the State University to look for a grant to study the erosion problems um, in Falmouth. I think that would be, you know, address some of the long-term problems we have and it would also be addressing some of the sources of revenue that may address some of those problems. That's okay. it. Thanks. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Anyone else with a comment? Sir, please. Yeah, my name is uh, John Cahill. I'm a, a longtime resident of uh, New Silver Beach in North Falmouth, and I have no objections to the, any of the projects at all. I'm very much in favor of them, but uh, I'm particularly concerned with the one on the left here, the Wild Harbor project, uh, which is part of uh, New Silver Beach and uh, North Falmouth. Uh, I just had basically two questions. Uh, is, is there funding available to proceed with the work, and is there any kind of a timetable? for the work to be done. Okay. Mr. Frazier, do you have the answers to those questions? Is there any funding and is there a timetable? I don't have very good news for you, but uh, uh -huh. we do have a line item budget, uh, a very modest line item budget um, that, that we do for dredging. But the way we actually handle this is we have the county come in and survey the inlets that typically need dredging. And then based on what those surveys come back, we allocate that very modest amount of money towards the dredging. But as far as the Wild Harbor project, that is not one that we would typically be doing on an annual or semi-annual basis because it's stayed relatively um, consistent since the last time we were in there. And some of the east-facing harbors, we, we know we have to do almost every single year. Well, just the, the uh, bulkhead area itself has, has not been done at all in the, in the main harbor itself. Well, and, the, and that, the bulkhead portion is part of the 
bulkhead repair, the yeah. dredging in front of it. Yeah. And uh, we have applied for grant funding to do that. We haven't been successful yet, but we have a, a one grant pending through the Buzzards Bay Coalition right now uh, to hopefully get some money to do that, that bu uh, bulkhead. But when we do the bulkhead, we will also do the dredging in front of the bulkhead. Is there any kind of a potential time frame? Well, we'll know about that one particular grant within a couple months, but if that does not, it, you know, that bulkhead has been part of the capital improvement uh, plan for some years, but, you know, there hasn't been a lot of spending in the capital budget, and, you know, it has to be prioritized with everything else in town, all the other infrastructure. So um, if, if we don't get that grant, we'll certainly look for any other grant to, to fund that. And speaking of Senator Murray, we've reached out to her on that project. She's aware of it and looking for funding for that particular project. Yeah. What would you say that? Possibilities of that getting approved that you have any percentage uh, of getting the the this most current grant. Yeah. Um, I would say that it it was one of six that the town submitted, and of the six, uh, because of the price tag uh, yeah. a, a that goes along with it, it probably is not one of the high priorities. Yeah. But uh, only because it's an expensive project. Uh, you know, yeah. all with the bulkhead and the dredging, we're talking you know in the neighborhood of six hundred thousand dollars. And that, that would be the reason it probably would not get funded through that particular grant. Yeah. Which is what we've been waiting for many, <coughs> a very many long time. Yeah, we've had that permitted, for, as you know, for a yeah. very long time. Yeah. So we just, how will we know if it gets approved? Well, uh, we'll, we'll obviously, if we'll be back in front of you for the, the, the puppy discussion if we do get that grant. <laughs> but um, it, we'll know uh, about any of the six within a couple of months. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very thank you. much, Greg, for your answers and okay, thank you. Mr. Cahill for your questions. So, if there's anything else to be said, added to the record here? Um, actually, Ms. would you, Mr. Herman, quickly, please, very briefly. Um, I appreciate what the gentleman said about um, he doesn't think that as a practical matter there will be enough sand that will drift in from this project to obstruct the pathways. But I say, fine, but if that's the case, why would anybody object to a condition to make sure that it is kept free if it in fact does? Nobody can really predict what beach sand will do that's deposited artificially. And in fact, um, uh, somebody said um, uh, at the outset, I think, I don't know if it was Ms. Fields in the presentation, uh, we uh, we want to make sure to see uh, what happens in one of the places the Conservation Commission or maybe the, the uh, member of the board said uh, we uh, the Conservation Commission said we want to make sure to see what happens with that sand before we go further what's the problem why don't we just have a simple condition once and for all that these will be kept clear and I ask again if the intention was not to slyly close the pathways, just like they tried the last time, and I've documented that in my written submission to you, that, that Woods Hole Group actually said in their written proposal, close the pathways, and then said orally to the board, we, no, we don't want to close them. Well, now, yeah. if their intention was not to close the pathways again, why in the plan that you have, and if you can't find it, I'd be happy to show it to you on the application, they showed a continuous line as the work line for the contractors which would have closed the pathways. That's my question. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your comments. Ms. Fields, you wanted to close the discussion with something. Yes, I'd love to. Um, this application, we're not proposing to do any work in the pathways at all, and, and we heard the residents along Surf Drive loud and clear last time, um, and we understand that the paths are to stay open, and so that's, that's definitely the intention. Um, so there's no work at all in the pathways. Okay. And, um, and, and the plan just shows the work, the area where we're working. We're not working in the dune. We didn't show the pathways in the dune, but we're not working there at all. Mm -hmm. So we're just working on the beach. Thank you. Sir, please. I'm sorry, you don't. She has to. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Fitz. Kevin. Um, I, I, Mr. Herman, just with all due respect, this board doesn't have the ability to change an order of conditions from the Conservation Commission. So you're asking us to do something we don't have the ability to do. We can't authorize work within a coastal dune. That's their jurisdiction. They're a regulatory body. 
I can understand where you're coming from, but I can look at both sides as, as someone who represents both taxpayers and, and voters in the community. You're looking to make sure that you have a clear and access pathway to the beach. Uh, Mr. Hoffer is looking to make sure that he can make sure there's actually beach on the other side when you get through that pathway. So there's a balancing act there. Um, I know that uh, in discussions with the Conservation Commission, I, I, I wholeheartedly understand your plight, but they claim that any coastal dune is in fact protecting your property. So they would be happy to have dunes placed along the entire beach, including the parking lot at Surf Drive. So there is a balancing act there. I, I will not disagree. But what you're asking us to do tonight is not within our power. What you're asking for needs to be addressed to the Conservation Commission. And I, I'm sorry that you didn't get your relief at the Conservation Commission, but this is, we either vote this up or we vote it down. But we don't have the ability to set additional conditions like the Conservation Commission. Okay, thank you, Kevin, for your comments. Anyone else? May I entertain a motion? Please. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd move approval of the order of conditions dated February 29, 2012, Mass DEP number 25 3786. Okay, Second. We, should we have a motion to also um, approve the complete application? Permit dredge from Phil and Alter Wetlands? Yes. I would recommend 16th. that, yes. Could Why don't we do adding your um, adding the dredging permit to the And so then also to approve the dredge permit or the application for permit to dredge fill or other alter wetlands dated March 16, 2012. Second. Okay, thank you. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Four, zero. Thank you very much. Thank you for all your hard work and uh, good job to the Waterways Committee and to the Harbor Master's Office for actually being able to move forward with this comprehensive plan. Thank, Thank you. you for all your suggestions. So next on the agenda, we have a request for a special event, the 35th annual, there's a slight typo here, Cape Code Marathon, Marathon Relay, and the second annual Half Marathon. Please, I believe Mr. Bird, I saw him somewhere in the audience. Mr. Bird, there he is. Um, good evening, Mr. Bird. Good evening. I, for the record, I'm Courtney Bird. I live on Sipawissa Road in Falmouth. And for the past uh, 30, 29 years, I've been the director of the Cape Cod Marathon. Um, and we're here to request permission uh, for the 35th annual Cape Cod Marathon. And with me here is uh, the race director elect um, who will take over in my place after this year as I'm going to retire into the sunset uh, and, and all of that. Normally, I realize that um, you consider events like this uh, under your correspondence, and it's a kind of a routine thing. Uh, I also am been quite aware from uh, having talked to Kevin and watched the news and listened to the and read the uh, Enterprise that there's quite a bit of concern about um, you know the proliferation of road races in the town, and that you're either you're being a little bit want to take a more um, uh, you want to look at each event and what the issues are and potentially condition them and so on. And I think that that's appropriate. Um, um, obviously, we have a track record and hopefully we'll, you know, we're not changing the drill or anything, but I, I really think it's an appropriate thing for you to do, um, particularly for new events that are coming into town. Um, uh, and I told Kevin that if, if the selectmen wanted to uh, create a uh, kind of a committee to draw up guidelines that cover everything from insurance to police to course layout and control and so on so that you have some assurances that uh, when an event comes that they follow the checklist and they satisfy those conditions prior to your granting a permit, I would be more than happy to, to, to work with you or more maybe one-on-one -on -one with uh, Julian, for example. Anyway, um, that said, um, I'll add, I'll take any questions that you might have, unless you would like me to give a 45-minute dissertation on the event. Thank you um, very much, Courtney, for your suggestion and for your offering to volunteer even more time to the town. 
Um, as you know, last year I had an issue with your new event, but you said you're not springing a new one on us this year. Um, it, we've got now the second annual half marathon moving on, and if I may um, just reiterate those comments to your successor here. Um, last year I, I, I and some others in town were wondering why the half marathon could not be held concurrently, simultaneously with the full marathon as is done in many, many, many other um, communities in in the world, and especially in, in the country here. And I will not um, exasperate the issue here tonight. <coughs> I'm going to bring it up, just planting the seed for you, and I'm going to open the, uh, the floor to questions from other members of the board, please. Kevin. Um, it, it, it's good to see you folks back before us again. Last time we had you, you were quoting Don Quixote, so the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no. um, um, I, I, I do appreciate it. And Courtney, uh, after we had some discussions earlier this year about road races, specifically new ones that came to town, yeah. um, called me and volunteered to be involved in, in uh, helping us set up a policy. Um, I will say that uh, the Cape Cod Marathon is another one of those races that has been in this community for many, many years. It's blossomed on a slow, methodical pace, meaning, uh, uh, and it's specifically in the off season. Uh, I mean, I think last year was the first year you had any decent weather and it wasn't 40 degrees. <laughs> no. But it still rained on one of the yeah. days, if I'm not mistaken. It was a, it was a little touch and go. Uh, right. So uh, I do know that at that time of the year that many of, uh, you know, uh, I'm in the seasonal business, we're not open, but I know that many of the uh, hotels in the town were, were bustling and, and full, and it was because of the weekend long event, um, the, particularly the half marathon one day and, and the marathon and another, it provided a family an opportunity, the ones who weren't quite in shape like dad, to. To get involved the day before or something of that nature, so uh, um, I I don't have a problem with this race. Uh, although I will keep in consistency and ask you, you have a wide range on a, on a number here of eight to ten thousand. You know, um, we've been capping races at a certain race, just numbers, so we didn't yeah, well, I, grow too fast. If so, I can, if I can uh, maybe clarify that, yes, um, what we we have always had a conscious policy that um, we, if we're going to grow the event, we do it incrementally. Um, we're very concerned that uh, what, what the impact of the event is and, and what we wouldn't want to do is suddenly if we, even if we could, jump the numbers way up because you're not maybe prepared for it. You don't have the systems in place. So it's, it's far better to, do, to, to go slow. And we have specific limits that we have to address. One is the size of the large school, which is our race headquarters. There's only so many, um, there's only so many parking places. There's only so many um, numbers that can be fed in the cafeteria at any one time. The, the number of showers is finite. And so those, that, that's a limiting factor. Um, the fact that we don't feel a, it's appropriate uh, to close roads. I mean, we close Main Street for a brief period of time on Saturday and we close it again on Sunday. But, the, but elsewhere in town, with certain limited points that I mentioned, we don't close the roads. Um, we leave them open to traffic. We put the signs up like you should see for a week in advance to kind of give people a heads up. But, um, uh, you know, we feel that to, if we increase the numbers, <clears throat> we would, beyond, say, what we do, we, we reach a point where we'd start to have to close a lot of roads. And that becomes a big issue for residents. And we're, we're, we're trying to be a good neighbor. You know, we, we want this to be successful for, as a great running event, we want it to be successful for the town, and we want the support of the town. We, it's a, it's a two-way street. Um, uh, we're not a charitable, I mean, the Fowler Track was a 501c3 organization, and we donate a lot of money every year from our funds and from the proceeds of our events and what we do. Um, and last year, the race, the race was able to donate $27,000 to local community-based organizations. Um, but we also get the support of a lot of the community. Uh, and, and we wouldn't get that support 
if we were going closing roads all over the place so that we in, really inconvenience people. When we thought about doing that half marathon last year and we opened it up, um, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to minimize, because we're talking about all of a sudden doing an event on another day. Two days in a row you're going to have road races. People are going to get road raced out. Mm -hmm. so, so how are we going to design a course to minimize the impact? And, and so what we did is we, we, we started early in the morning. We did a lot of the race course on, on Surf Drive. We kept it all south of town uh, on low traffic roads. We kept it off of Woods Hole Road except for a short stretch coming out of the Steamship Authority parking lot to Church Street. And, and, and it worked. Um, so now, you know, we're looking at it and saying, okay, we did that successfully with the numbers we had. So now we're going to try it. We can raise it incrementally. And so we're going up to 1,100 from, from um, about 900 we had last year. So, but, but that's the most we want to do. And I think there's probably a finite limit to that event, but I'd rather wait and do this a couple of years down the road when, I, when, when we know the systems all work. I mean, that's, that's the approach that we take. Thank you, Courtney. So you answered half of my, um, my question for you. I wanted to know what the numbers for last year were for both the half and the whole marathon, because I'm wondering if your eight to 10,000 runners, is that a combined total for both, or is that just the marathon? No, what, I, what I, I think maybe that it's... So you uh, said 900 for last year for the half, and you're hoping to aim for 1,100 this year for the half. Right, marathon. and and then the, the full marathon, we're, we're, we're keeping around, uh, around uh, 1,200. Um, 1,200? Yeah, for the marathon. Yeah. And then there's 200 in the relay teams. Now, when, when you're hearing 10,000... It's on your application. You have yeah, 8 you have, to 10,000. You have 8 to 10,000 Spectators. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah. that's, but yeah. you were in other words, next to it, though. Is that, yeah, that's yeah. yeah. And that includes... Says. When I said 8 to 10,000, it was because, you know, you were asking, how many people attend the event? Well, yeah. you know, well, we I'm estimate... We, at, we based on statistics and what we've... In surveys we've done on runners, it's about two and a half spectators per runner now, we don't see a lot of half people running around but you know um, it's 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 an odd it's a, and and so those are the people who fill up the restaurants and the hotels and 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 so on they don't block the roads but they'll be out there cheering things on in terms of the total number of runners, runners. if everyone who signed up showed up mm -hmm. it would be about 34 3500 okay the and typically the relay do you but, count the relay as one person or is it as four? No, no, no. I'm talking about that if everybody who signed up mm -hmm. showed up mm -hmm. okay. for all three events, for the marathon, the relay, and the half marathon, okay. there'd be about 3,500, 3,400. Okay. Okay. That's that you take 1,100 and 1,200 and, and then about 950 on the relay teams, okay. and that's, that's where you come to. Thank now, you. typically, it's okay. uh, and I've <laughs> tracked this over the years, typically, uh, for the marathon, about 25% don't show up. Mm -hmm. And for the half, probably 20 to 25. For the relay, it's a lot less, unless you have a storm like we had the last time. So, okay. um, I, I, I um, there we are. Okay. So, well, following up on my question, if we <laughs> gave you a, a limit of 2,000 on each day, would that be, would that cover? Yeah, if you want to put a 2,000 well, on. Well, we've been kind of doing that. That's why I'm trying to say well, that. I, I don't, I'm not looking for 2,000. I mean, because I wouldn't want 2,000, right? But yeah. on the second day, you have relayers and runners. Oh, I see what you're saying. So that's Are a total you saying 2,000 two, per day? Um, yeah, that's fine. Is that realistic? Okay. So let's just limit the whole I mean, you really, what's your. Perhaps just the whole weekend to 4,000. I mean, what, what happens with a marathon? You got, I mean, with a relay, well, you got to realize that there aren't, there are 200 runners on the road at any one time. The other ones are standing around watching the other ones. So in reality, on Sunday, there's like, at the maximum, 1,400, more, more likely 1,100 that are actually out there running. Okay. Thank you, Courtney. I think we, we understand the issues. Does anyone else on the board have a question for uh, Mr. Bird or his successor? If not, I'd no, be happy I, to entertain a motion. I will make the motion uh, to approve the uh, marathon, Madam Chair. Do you need the date specifically just? Well, it would be um, nice PR for the marathon. Okay. Yeah, the, it's I'll Saturday, look. October 27th, and Sunday, 28th. Correct. So moved, That's Madam Chair. Okay. Second. Well, I'll second, but you want to put a maximum number of 2,000 each day? Okay. My, uh, let me, 
I make a motion, Madam Chair, to approve the 35th Annual Cape Cod Marathon Relay and Half Marathon on um, October 27th, 28th, 2012, with a maximum runner amount of 2,000 per day. Second. Great. So we have a motion on the table. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Please, none. Thank, Thank you, you very much. You've got your marathon and your second annual half marathon. Good luck. That. And, uh, that was for nothing. Thank you very much. Oh, so now we've had a couple of exciting moments here. Um, so we're a little behind on our schedule here. However, the first, we have some committee interviews to work on right now. And we were going to interview today for the Cable Advisory Committee, the Council on Aging, the Agricultural Commission, and for two members for the Beach Committee. And actually, Kathleen Cover, for, who is the applicant for the Cable Advisory Committee, has called this afternoon to inform us she couldn't make it tonight. So um, we'll move her out to another meeting, I guess, perhaps, we'll, we'll, if, if the office could try to arrange to find a date for her at some point. And so we'll start then by interviewing Ms. Brenda Swain, service member of the Council on Aging, our uh, volunteer extraordinaire here in town. Good evening, Brenda. Hello. So if you could just please tell the board a little bit about yourself, not that we don't know much about you or a lot about you already, and um, tell us why you'd like to serve on the board, what you think you can bring to the board, please. Sure. Or to the council. Well, thank you for taking time to interview me. Um, I'll talk as quickly as I can and get to the point <laughs> fast. Um, I've lived in Falmouth since 1983, um, and I worked at, in several different venues. I was in early childhood for quite a while and a lot of community development. Um, but I also, when I was in graduate school, did some work um, in gerontology and uh, at one point thought I wanted to be a physical therapist. So I worked in a couple different nursing homes. Um, so I have over the course of my lifespan, um, not as much in my career, but um, earlier, uh, spent some time with seniors in those type of facilities. I also have had some experience with my own family um, as they've aged and gone through some of the things that they've experienced. I also, at, at Falmouth Service Center, where I've been blessed to be the director for 10 years, um, have done a lot of outreach to seniors and have worked with the Senior Center in um, many different ways over those years to try to encourage partnerships and to work to reach out to more seniors that we know need the services of the Service Center, but also could possibly help the Service Center to reach others, people who have time on their hands, who would like to volunteer, um, who've recently retired here. So I, I see um, the work of the Council on Aging and its new director as an opportunity to uh, really reach out to a segment of our population that's growing, um, some of whom need help and some of whom want to help. Uh, so my experience at the service center uh, with our building um, has been something that's been quite an experience for me. Um, I started there, I started in the old building and moved us into the new building. Um, so, and now we're going through a major renovation project. Uh, and I think that those experiences will also help as the Senior Center looks at space issues. One of the first times I was in the Senior Center building, um, it was because their building had been temporarily condemned and they needed to move out their medical equipment to a new location, which is now in the basement of the Falmouth Service Center. So we've kept it there um, because they really don't have a space for it. Uh, and I know that there are many different opportunities for seniors where they want to go to events at our current location and there's not enough room for all the people who want to attend. So all of those, um, wonderful opportunities to look at space going forward would be something I'd love to be able to help with. That's one of the reasons that I'm interested in joining that group. I was, I served for nine years on the Human Services Committee and termed off because of term limits uh, and enjoyed that work, but I felt that it would be good to volunteer in a different capacity and this seems to really fit with sort of where I am in my life um, and I'd love to work with Jill to move the mission she has forward. Thank you very much. It sounds like a fantastic match to me, but I'll open the floor to the board. If anyone has any questions for Ms. Swain. More, if I may, just more of a comment. I mean, I've, uh, I've been over the service center, and, and uh, I just want to thank you for your application, but just thank you for everything you've done. You're a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. 
for this particular uh, uh, position, and I just want to, um, at least I can't, maybe so on behalf of the board. motion, David? Well, I just want to say a couple words to her okay. first, yes. if that's all right. That's fine. Um, I just want to thank you for all the things you've done. I, it's, it's amazing uh, to watch the service center, how it's uh, um, really grown. And if no one else is going to say anything, I will make a motion. But Kevin? No, I just, go ahead. I was going to look. Okay, I make a motion to approve Mrs. Swain for the uh, position on the uh, Council on Aging. And actually, she is filling a term that expires June 30th, 2012. So, um, I'll uh, see you again shortly. Yeah. I'll second that motion. <laughs> or do but we I, appoint her for the next three years then? I, Can we appoint her for, through the. No, I think no. that's okay. all that's available. I don't yeah. mind coming back. Okay. Yeah. I'll just say I'd like to do it again. We'll see you shortly. No. I, I, I just wanted to make a comment. So with that ability, you served nine years on the other committee. The, the beauty of this is you're serving an unexpired term. You could actually serve nine years in five months. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's or two months. Or three months. months yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we have a motion on the floor and a second. So all those in favor of appointing Brenda Swain to be on the board of the Council on Aging? Do so by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None. Thank you very much, Brenda. Four in favor, none opposed. We have a new member of the Council on Aging Board. So next up we have uh, Ms. Caroline Gabriel, who would like to serve as a member of the Agricultural Committee. Is Ms. Gabriel here today? Do we have a communication lapse, perhaps? Do we know? Haven't heard anything uh, back. Okay. Well, Invitation did go out. Well, if we haven't heard anything back, then perhaps she hasn't received the invitation, and um, maybe we can try again. This is a March 31st application, so I would guess that it's still in her interest. So if you could please then... Uh, move along with that for the next couple of weeks. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So then tonight we have also two openings on the Beach Committee. And did all of you get a copy of the second application that we received just the other day? Mel, I hope. Do we have? Uh, if I have them right, right here. There. I've got copies right here. No, I just so have the Cohen we one. have Ms. Donna Cohen, who will interview first, has applied to serve on the expressed interest to serve on the Beach Committee. And then just the other day, or just today, Mr. Dan Shearer also applied to serve on the Beach Committee. We happen to have two openings on yeah. the Beach Committee. So That's one thing we don't have in our package is yep, what we have for openings and, and when those terms expire. I have um, here the, the two openings. I didn't send out this packet, but the Beach Committee, we have um, Heidi Waltz's term, which expires June 30th, 2013 and Jeffrey Billard's term, which also expires June 30th, 2013, with those two openings. And so um, we have two applicants and two openings, and if anyone has any objections to taking Mr. Shearer's application also today, we did not actually list um, interviewees on the agenda, so we thought that perhaps we could sneak him in after the earlier applicant application of Ms. Cohen. Is Ms. Cohen here right now? Ms. Cohen, would you mind coming to the, the lectern and addressing the, the, the board, telling us your interests, introducing yourself? I love the us. beach. <laughs> um, I've lived here most of my life. I moved here when we were, I was nine years old. I grew up at Surf Drive. That's where we lived. I got to be a teenager. I used to go to the Heights. When I had little children. We started going to Woodneck. When I had a teenager, we had to go to Old Silver. And now that my kids have left the nest, I can go pretty much where I want. Um, and I just think the beaches are one of the best assets in this town. I've, I've never served a town before, but I'd like to do something. I do have one issue, however. Mm -hmm. I can't do Wednesday night meetings. That's oh. the one night of the week I work. And if they can't change the night of the meetings, I cannot, I'd have to withdraw my application. Um, uh, Madam Chair, I, I had yes. reached out a little bit. Um, and checked into this. I'm sort of like a liaison to the beach committee, mm -hmm. thing. and I don't. I the the uh, because of the chairman, mm -hmm. his schedule mm -hmm. is etched in stone to be there Wednesday night. That they cannot change it. Okay. So then I'll have to withdraw it. Sorry. And Mr. Hoffer is here. He could probably uh, confirm that. No, that's okay. That's yeah. fine. But that's all I can do. Thank you. 
Well, thank you very much for applying. In fairness to, to this uh, lady, did you tell him that you had talked to me? Yes. Well, no, but no, oh, she had talked to me, and I, I had mentioned that for you. on the application. I did. Yeah, I had mentioned the fact that uh, in yesteryear, why the beach committee did meet on a different night. But I've checked with all the beach committee people, including the chairman, and they've made scheduled their commitments so that they'll meet on Wednesday. Okay. I'm very That's sorry fine. because That's okay. That's we okay. need we need people. If you ever like change you. it. Or yeah. if I ever lose my job. Right. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you for volunteering, thank you. Thank though, Ms. And Ms. Cohen. And um, there are other committees that do meet on other days of the week that I'm sure we'll need. I'll be making a speech. Okay, well, take a look, anyhow. Okay. But thank you very thank much you. for your for expressing your interest and hope to see you in the future then um, on the border committee. So then, um, if we have no objections, should we interview Mr. Shearer then? I, th I think these are evolving. Yes. Um, applications so yeah. that uh, there is no deadline because I don't believe there are, but uh, no. you know, there are openings. It's not a deadline for a June 30th appointment. That is correct. So I would um, entertain then having Mr. Shearer stand to the lectern and introduce himself to us and convince us to appoint him to the beach committee to fill one of the openings. Please. Well, Dan Shearer, I live in West Falmouth and I've lived here year-round for 38 years. Uh, I think my main love of Falmouth is the water and the beaches. And I've worked with the Port Beach Committee. I think it's a great committee. I think the people on it are a lot of fun and will be fun to work with. And I'm, I'm willing to would give them the time and my energy. Thank you very much, Mr. Shearer. Any questions from the board for Mr. Shearer? I know you're an avid boater, but my question is, are you an avid beacher? I walk the beach almost every day. Okay. okay. I, don't, I don't swim unless it's very, very warm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or I fall overboard. But no, I am not a, uh, what you say, someone who goes with an umbrella and a beach towel. Okay. But if you come down to Chappaquiddick Beach, before you open the parking lot, I'm usually walking in there, and as you know, I own quite a bit of beach in, right, right. in West Falmouth. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Mr. Shearer? I would just note Chris. that um, I'm familiar with Mr. Shearer and his contributions to the town, and I think he would make a fine addition to the beach committee. Mm -hmm. So I would make a motion that we point Mr. Shearer to the unexpired term uh, that June 30th, ends June 30th. 2013. Second. Okay, if there's no more discussion on the matter, I'll, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed? Thank Welcome. you, Mr. Shearer. So you leave the FinCom and we get you on the Beach Committee instead. Okay, it's not keeping your schedule open. Thank you very much. So that was for nothing. Okay, let's move on. So we are at the 8 o'clock number of, we're catching up a little bit here. We have a new Class 2 motor vehicle license, I guess. Um, last meeting, you gentlemen approached the Cape Cod Classic Cars application for 70 East Falmouth Highway. This has been continued from April 9th, 2012. And we have answers to your questions yes. from last time. Yes, we Hi. have answers. Do you have questions? Hi, would you mind Hi. introducing yourself to the, the audience? Again? I'm Melody Longobardi. Um, I've been, I've worked for Falmouth probably for eight years with Cape Cod Classic Cars for seven and a half years, almost eight years, mm -hmm. and I've kind of taken over a little bit and would like to actually sell cars now more or less on eBay and not necessarily in a designated spot. So we have here an application for a Class Two used car dealer's license to buy and sell secondhand motor vehicle licenses, um, and that was the question Matt. last week. And there is a um, condition in the zoning regulations that we have to be mindful of, no, that's right. and that your property um, has a special permit granted on it, but it's granted for office space use only. With well, parking. and that technically is all that it would be. It would only be office use. I have storage for the vehicles. They're in a storage facility. They're actually not in um, display for any means for you just to come by and say that, oh, that's a car. I'd like to drive it. It's online sales only. It's um, a lot of the sales are actually to all 51 states and <laughs> um, the last car that I sold was in Australia, actually, to believe it or not. So it's outside of the U.S. as well. So, okay. 
So as long as you are going to use it for office space only, with yes. no storage or staging of vehicles, you may indeed use that real estate as, as such. Um, if you ever intend to store or stage vehicles there, you need to get a, a, a modification for your special permit. Okay. Kevin. Um, I would make a suggestion if we make a motion that she just touch base with the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals to get an administrative approval. Even though she's explained that to us, that's not within our pay, pay grade to say what you can use her property for. Okay, well the, what I, I know was that, but was the, just it, from the building commissioner. From the building commissioner itself. Oh, right, no, it was from the zoning board of appeals. Excuse right. Me. So she just needs to explain to them, and they'll they'll sign off on her being able to do that this way. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the rest of the board might correct me, but I, I'm pretty sure that w the way I read it, that she just needs to get administrative approval at the Zoning Board of Appeals. Explain to them what she's going to do. Okay. There is no staging of cars on the site. That's basically yep. what the ZBA right. said. There is. So there if is. you're able to explain that, I, I don't think that that's something we're going to permit you on. That's what the ZBA would permit you on. Now, will that, in, in that saying, will that allow me to go ahead and apply for getting a license for a dealer tag as well in order to run cars from the auction and back and store them in my storage facility? Or is that... Um, that's a state registry thing. I that's believe, a state registry it? thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. He that Heather has an answer to that. Yeah. No, I don't, have, I don't, I don't have an answer to that. But I <laughs> think I have a, a way, if, you, if the board is prepared to make a motion, you could uh, approve it subject to the appropriate authority. Of okay. the Zoning Board of Appeals, so that we would not release the Board of Selectmen's uh, permit until you came in with the right uh, uh, authority from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay. And that way you, you wouldn't have to come back here. And, and I'd be willing to make a motion. I, I do know other car dealers in this particular town that actually don't have cars on display. Mm -hmm. They have an office, which is a requirement by the Registry of Motor Vehicles. So I make a motion that uh, we approve the Class Two license. Um, subject to the license being picked up <coughs> with authorization for the site to be used as an office facility from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those, uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck with your business. Can I just make, just oh, uh, help Heather? I, I know that the zoning administrator is not. I don't think she's in this week, so I, I, I don't want you to be get run around at all. So you might want to just check and just make sure check. that there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Good night. Okay. And so next we have um, a continuation of your discussion and a vote on the proposed remote participation policy for public bodies. So again, I wasn't at this past meeting, but I know that anecdotally that you um, had some discussion and that you wanted to hold this town of Falmouth remote participation policy open meeting uh, regarding the open meeting law, the new Massachusetts open meeting laws. Does anyone have any comments about this? This is to um, allow remote participation by members of the public bodies at meetings of public bodies conducted in accordance with Mass General Law um, Chapter 30A, Section 18 through 25 of the open meeting law. And um, I do know that the person or persons of any committee, commission board, who would be participating remotely, A, would not count as a part of the quorum and may not vote on matters at hand, but may comment and participate in discussion at these meetings. So, um, what were some concerns? that you had. I also know that Frank Duffy, our town council, believes that um, this is a fine addition to our policies because it is a new part of the Massachusetts Open Meeting Law. And so if we have some guidelines in place, then, um, then if the need arises, people can do such. Kevin. Um, we had a discussion about mm -hmm. this at our last meeting. Uh, unfortunately, you weren't there, uh, neither yeah. was Mrs. Flynn, and we held it over because we thought it would be fair to have the entire board here. Um, I've been quite clear about my, my, uh, my opposition to this. I first of all think that there is no um, set medium. In fact, uh, on this policy, never mind the fact that I think people need to see body language within a room, uh, specifically when we're dealing with issues that could affect people's livelihood, could affect their property rights, property values. Um, 
would this policy would extend to regulatory bodies and I don't think you get the full flavor of anything unless you're sitting in the room looking someone in the eye and then in fact being able to answer questions back and forth and submit questions it it is very vague on the type of medium we would use it doesn't say that in fact we would even be skyping with the person it, it says that you know that we would be communicating with them it could be a conference call uh, we don't know if they would hear everything in the room. We don't know. There, there are too many variables, and quite candidly, I think if people either get elected or a volunteer for a board, they should make every effort to try to make those those board meetings and those those meetings. If that's not ha if that's not possible, there, that happens in life. No one of us, if we were to die tomorrow, the town would move on. So it is not important that important that everyone has to uh, put their two cents worth in at every every meeting and uh, if you should try to uh, you also have the ability to work with the chairman if there's an issue that really interests you to ask the chairman on your particular in this case the chairman of the board of selectmen to hold an issue off if you know that uh, something's coming up but if someone's sick at home uh, you know, besides the fact that they're not going to be contagious, uh, it, it, you, know, you know, what are doing a service to that person or, or an applicant if we put them on a telephone or in a Skype situation? Those are my opinions. If the board wants to hold off till we have a full board, I'd be happy to do so. But uh, I, I spoke spoken to people around town, and uh, some people have come up to me since the discussions and have agreed with me I know we're in a new te technologically savvy world but uh, I still believe in a handshake and looking someone in the eye when I'm telling them one thing or another so that's that's my two cents worth Anyone else with the um, you know I this is one of those solutions looking for a problem I think because if it's you if you're a remote participant and you can't vote mm -hmm. and you're not part of the quorum mm -hmm. then what's the point um, it's, it, it seems to me the only thing you're getting out of it is the ability to, to discuss something remotely with the rest of the board, but in that case, as Mr. Murphy noted, I think the public who might be participants in the same discussion are at a disadvantage because they cannot see or fully interact with the individual in question. Um, and you know, I too, for these very reasons, have a problem with uh, approving this policy. I know it's part of the new open meeting law, but I got to wonder why the, you know, what was the logic behind the legislature for approving such a thing when it doesn't really solve a problem. It simply allows for somebody to participate in a discussion remotely. May, may I suggest that perhaps, um, because the, the law set, or the, the policy here says a member of the body public shall be permitted to participate remotely for a number of reasons. Many um, committee and board meetings are not televised and if somebody, for example, has just had knee surgery and participates in a, or, or volunteers on a board and wants to remain informed as to everything that's going on at the meeting that that person can't physically attend because they're in bed or is, you know, has been called away on a business trip, then I, I would like to think that if, if our volunteers would like to remain informed and up to date on matters that they would be able to call in, Skype in, listen in on a on a, some mode of technology. Um, yes, they can't vote, but they can be informed. And then that information can help them make better informed decisions further down the line. And they can still be active um, participants. And I'd, I'd like you to consider that, um, that position, if I may. David, do you want to chime in? Hi. I did, uh, I was the one who asked to move it we, uh, last time, two weeks ago, because I didn't know we were not going to have a full board tonight, but yeah. four is better than three, but I made the same comments that I've heard already here uh, from my, the people on either side of me. Um, this is not a policy that I think I, that I'm going to support, so okay. thank well, you. Well, then perhaps we should not take any action on this and uh, continue the evening. Okay. Well. Oh, actually, the League of Women Voters would like to make a comment. Please. 
please to come to the lectern and identify yourself for the people at home. I'm Kathleen Murray, Precinct 1, and a member of the Library Board of Trustees. Now, this is an independently uh, voted body, so it's not really the same as what you're going through with the selectmen. But we would like to use the remote participation on occasion and under the guidelines that uh, the town council has suggested. So maybe we'd be a good sample for people to look at. And it may not only happen once or twice a year, so I don't, can't say how often we can tell you. <laughs> I mean, any, any other comments, Mr. Fitter? And along those lines, I mean, if we have a policy that allows it, because it is allowed by the state statutes, then if a committee or a board would indeed care to use it, then they have the option to use it. It doesn't necessitate that every board must use it. It just says that the public body shall be permitted to per participate, or members shall be permitted to participate remotely. Mr. Fitter. Um, Mark Fitter and Trotting Back Road. Um, I agree completely with the three gentlemen and I actually this kind of piqued my interest and I asked several people that I know and they all agreed with you three and uh, a friend of mine I think put it best and basically said tell them to get off the couch um, and I think that pretty much says it all thank you We'll let this wither for now. I, I make a motion that we do not adopt um, the proposed uh, uh, remote policy participate uh, the remote participation policy for public bodies at this time. Second. Okay, we have a motion on the table. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. No. Three in favor, one opposed. So we move on to our discussion and vote of the fee waiving policy. We have a draft of this policy. You gentlemen discussed it last time and you've decided to continue it. I know we, I, I anticipate we won't have a full board until perhaps the meeting before um, the election. Hopefully the one before that, May 7th, might be a full board meeting. But um, in the meantime, I can't guarantee anything. Um. So the fee waive policy, um, it's, but we have the, the standard town manager is allowed to waive the fees for municipal projects and school projects, and then we are outlining the um, exemptions. So we're basically formalizing, I believe, something that has been done in the past. Yes, um, it, it, And if I can just, we, the, this board, instructed the town manager to develop this policy. Mm -hmm. uh, we recently had two non-profits that came in and asked for their fees to be waived. Um, although both of them um, were well-meaning, one of them didn't really even want the fee to be waived. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's much easier for folks in the administrator's office if we have a written policy, they hand the policy, and they understand where the ramifications are and whether they fit within that or not. Uh, many of these uh, uh, although worthy causes and worthy groups have sizable amounts of money in the bank. And uh, I know that they work towards that, but uh, specifically in this time when the town of Falmouth has been struggling financially, uh, our employees have been taking furlough days, um, the schools are to a point where they're not getting the budgets they want, nor our department heads uh, or our capital needs are unmet. I think it's prudent on our behalf to actually uh, vote in a fee uh, fee policy. Okay. So the. Um, so my motion would be that we accept the uh, fee wave policy. That should be waiver. Yeah. It should be waiver. Pardon me. Waiver yeah, it's policy. A, it's a draft, so we can take typos. Well, I know this is a draft, but yeah. my suggestion is that we accept the draft. Okay. Second. So. Um, Last week, did you have the chance to read this into the record? Or, uh, I think we give it to the press. I don't know if you want to read the, the whole thing. No, that's okay. I'm not going to read it into, uh, into the press. But it still allows for private nonprofit agencies to uh, present cases for exemptions to the rule. And there are some parameters for affordable housing projects and, um, and 
inspection fees and fees associated with direct service or material costs will not be waived. And that is effectively how we've been um, functioning over the past couple of years. So all those in favor of Thank the you, Oh, Mr. Hoffer, comment. Come here to speak on this. Don Hoffer, Beach Superintendent. Uh, I don't know the, the content of what you had before you. However, uh, it, within the past year, I've had occasion where we have a new spirit of volunteerism in the town. And uh, these uh, volunteer uh, associations uh, are having what they call open houses and so on uh, to raise funds for the beaches. And they were initially, the, there was an, the initial one, they were going to charge a fee, and I interceded. And I guess I'm just saying that if indeed there's someone trying to raise money for the town, is that in there? I, it, it, there's, a, there's a fee waiver in municipal projects, town projects in which the procurement and solicitation of documents clearly indicate in the public bidding process prior to the opening of the price proposals, the fees shall be waived. Okay, thank you. Yep. Don't have exempt. Yeah. Yeah. Not germane here. Okay, so we have a motion on the table and a second. So all those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 As opposed, no. no. Four zero. Thank you very much. So, meeting minutes, April 9th, 2012. So I was not here. I leave this to you, gentlemen. Make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And one abstention. Thank you very much. So, so we're down to the summary of actions. So we start out with two proclamations. Do we have any volunteers for proclamation reading? I'll read the first one. We've got um, Fisher Folk Week. We have a proclamation naming April 22nd through 28th Fisher Folk Week. In, um, honor of Earth Day and the tradition of fishing and the Falmouth Fishing Association and, and um, traditional aquaculture and the traditional fishing industry here in Falmouth um, made a request to make a proclamation. Whereas Falmouth has a long and storied history of being a haven of fishing and whereas the sport of fishing and its numerous sub-related businesses has and remains to be a substantial part of Falmouth's economy and whereas numerous Falmouth residents enjoy saltwater, freshwater, and shelf fishing, and whereas scientific institutions related to the study of the sea make Falmouth an international destination. Now, therefore, we, Mary Pat Flynn, Melissa C. Freitag, Brent Putnam, Putnam, David Braga, and Kevin Murphy, as selectmen of the town of Falmouth, by authority vested in us, hereby proclaim the week of April 22nd through 28th, the week of the Falmouth fisher folk and invite all citizens to celebrate all of the men, women, boys, and girls who have made and continue to make the fishing industry such an important part of our community. Any objections to so that? So moved. Great. Second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. OK, the ayes have it. I'll pass this down for some signatures. And then we have tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock, Falmouth Historical Society is hosting its annual heritage dinner and awarding the Falmouth branch of the Visiting Nursing Association, the VNA, um, as having a very positive impact upon Falmouth and the region. And for that, we have, um, it's now known as, let's see, the VNA was a group that began in 1916 in Falmouth and in Woods Hole and has since spread across the Cape. And now known as the VNA of Cape Cod and affiliated with Cape Cod Healthcare, the VNA started with one nurse on a bicycle giving health care to many people in the community. And um, the Falmouth Historical Society would like to honor the impact of the VNA has made by issuing a proclamation from us. And this proclamation reads, do you care to read it? I'll read, I'll keep going. Be, oh, <laughs> I'll keep going. I got it here. Be it hereby known that the town of Falmouth offers most sincere congratulations to the Visiting Nurse Association of Falmouth and of Cape Cod in receiving the 13th Annual Falmouth Historical Society Heritage Award for their enduring, com in enduring commitment to offering compassionate and superior health care to the residents of Falmouth and of Cape Cod since their inception in 1916. Your contributions to our town and community have made it a better place for all of us. 
So, you have a motion? I'll, s I'll make a motion, Madam Chair, to approve the proclamation. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. The ayes have it for nothing. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's go through the summary of actions here. Uh, number three is to approve a request for a wedding permit in Manili and Zolo on Bristol Beach, August 4th, 2012. It's continued from April 9th. Number four is to approve a request for a wedding permit, Trisha Golden on Surf Drive Beach, August 31st, 2012. Number five is to approve a request for special events, the East Falmouth Elementary School PTO at Marina Park on June 19th, 2012. Number six. Hold. Number seven is to approve 2012. Yeah. Um, number eight, we need to continue this. This is to vote to authorize the town manager to release 141 Locust Street in accordance with Zoning Board of Appeals permit. We need to continue this until the 14th of May. We have some conflicting data Thank from um, the ZBA and from town council, so we need to work out everything. Yep. So if nobody minds, I'll continue that. And then we have the voting revisions to the conservation restriction at T-Ticket Park, the 300 committee. And number 10, the chief, police chief, has asked that we um, continue that to a later date and need some more information on that one. That's an MOU with the Coast Guard. So we'll continue number 10 also. And then number 11 is to vote to approve town manager request for authorization and attend MMA spring annual conference. And then number 12 I'll hold so that I can read the um, voluntary water restrictions into the record. So if I could have a motion, please, for numbers 3, 4, 5, 9, and 11. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 So that was 3, 4, 5, 9, and 11. So number 6. Uh, yes, Madam Chairman. Uh, just a disclosure that I'm the whole of an all-alcoholic seasonal liquor license. Okay, so number six was to approve a request for one-day liquor license for the Quisset Yacht Club um, for two one-day liquor licenses for August 10th and August 11th, 2012. There's a motion. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, all those opposed, no. Four, zero. And then we've got a list here of 2012 annual seasonal license renewals that need to be approved. So our first... Madam Chairman, yes. um, because of the close proximity to my restaurant, mm -hmm. first of all, I'm the hold of an all-alcoholic seasonal liquor, liquor license, mm -hmm. but because of the close proximity to my restaurant in uh, both Quicks Hole and the Landfall Restaurant, I will abstain from those votes. Okay, so thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a wine and malt inholder license for Quicks Hole 6 Luscombe Avenue Woods Hall. Do have a motion? And a second? Let me make a motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Staying. Okay. Three, zero, one. Uh, we have common victuallers licenses for Quicks Hole in Woods Hole and Landfall in Woods Hole. Make a motion, Madam Chair. Approve. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Staying. Abstain. Three, zero, one. We have an entertainment license renewal for Quicks Hole in Woods Hole. Make a motion, Madam Chair. Approve. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Abstain. Abstain. Okay, we have some second-hand dealer licenses here. Uh, one for Cash Point, one for Falmouth Service Center, one for the Cape Cod Pickers Auction, and one for Hanush Jewelers. Make a motion, Madam Chair. Approve those four. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Four enough. Thank you. And then lodging houses. We have um, applications for the Woods Hole Inn, the Inn on the Sound, Grandview Guest House, the Bed and Breakfast of Wakoit Bay, Captain, Captain Tom Lawrence House Inn, Bailey's by the Sea, and the Captain's Manor Inn. Move to approve. Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, four nothing. Thank you very much. So, any individual selectmen's reports out there? Uh, Madam Chairman, yes. you had uh, the article on number 12 
or the voluntary water restrictions. Ah, the voluntary water and, and restrictions. Oh, oh, I, I do have a question. Yes. Before you read anything into the record. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, oh, the restriction, if I'm not mistaken, in regard to the washing of patios and sidewalks, has stated that with the exception of for sanitary reasons, mm -hmm. I know there are quite a few restaurants in this community um, that wash their areas where they serve. Well, may so I suggest that these um, are voluntary water restrictions? I know, but the, the second part of these goes in as mandatory. So if we adopt the voluntary, phase two is the mandatory. So it has always been the policy that we have, and I looked at my former records, okay. that we put that caveat in there. Okay, I don't recall doing that, but if, if, if you... May, maybe Mr. Jack would comment on that. I have no, I certainly have no issues with something like that. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I know that for years when I was utilities manager, yes, we did okay. do that, and it is for that. It's a health and safety issue, okay. even when you think of something like an ice cream shop that may have ice cream on the sidewalk or something like yeah. that. I, I don't recall doing that when Mr. Chapman was here, but we didn't have um, Kevin on the board to remind us that, that there are sanitary issues involved. I have no issues with, with adding that to the record here. Um, let me just read And just for disclosure numbers. purposes, I am a restaurant that would, in fact, do that. So uh -huh. it, it is not personal, but I have been contacted in the past, and we have voted that in past meetings. Okay. So may I suggest, then, that we um, declare a state of water supply conservation um, level one voluntary water restrictions at this time. And the level one voluntary restrictions consist of four points. One is that watering of lawns and shrubs is limited to otter even days only based on house address and only between the hours of 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. Although today, I don't think anybody, after today, I don't think anybody needs to water. Um, number two is the washing of sidewalks, patios, and driveways is prohibited except for the needs for health and sanitary purposes. And number three, restaurants may only serve water when requested by patrons. And number four, pistol grip nozzles are required for all hoses used for washing cars and all hoses at dockside facilities. Gentlemen, a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, four zero. So we now have some volunteer water conservation restrictions. So then I guess now, thank you for re reminding me that I held back. Um, anyone have a report? Um, Joe Slecken's report. Yes, Madam Chairman, I had the opportunity uh, on April the 12th, I believe it was, to attend the uh, workshop from the Consensus Building Institute um, and uh, watch the presentation and the potential for the formulation of a committee that uh, would have uh, come up with some suggestions on how the town would move forward in regard to uh, the wind turbines and uh, whether or not we would have an operational plan or not an operational plan, whether to look at all of the options, I guess. Um, it was a, a very well-run meeting, uh, stayed very focused and on task, and uh, um, did, it did listen to everybody's viewpoints in regard to how we would move forward. It wasn't a meeting to say, whether one was for or against, it was a meeting to discuss the process. Okay. And I think uh, um, the moderator did an excellent job, and it was very informative, uh, the options that we have as a board to help um, move the process forward, and uh, I look forward to discussing that in the future. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was um, fascinating also seeing the minutes manifest themselves um, being very neutral. I, I don't think I've ever seen such neutral minutes in my life. An, an attendee said, an attendee said no gender indications, no, no, um, no names, nothing. It was really very, very professionally done. Right. I mean, there, there were on occasion some folks mm -hmm. that, that uh, wanted to take the meeting off task and the, the facilitator brought it back to task. Yeah. Uh, and I thought that uh, she did an excellent job. Thank you, Kevin. Anyone else? Madam okay. Chair, I had the uh, fine time the other evening when I uh, 
Actually, it was a very good meeting. Uh, the room was packed at the beach committee. Oh. Small room, but it was standing room only. Mm -hmm. In fact, some were standing. What was the hot issue on the agenda? Well, what we discussed was, one of the things, as you know, as I've been discussing, is the uh, Messina money being used for a handicap ramp mm -hmm. at um, Falmouth Heights Beach. And secondly, we're waiting for uh, an, uh, an opinion uh, ruling from Mr. Duffy if that money can be used for that. In the uh, license agreement, it says enhancement of Falmouth Heights neighborhood. That's what it says. But the agreement can also be changed if the two parties get together and agree on such change. Because, and that's the second thing I wanted to discuss, which uh, Julian is aware that I think, as we're talking about this 10 year comprehensive plan with our beaches, I know if it goes through the ballot, we're going to be doing um, $40,000 worth of nourishment at Surf Drive. Um, Falmouth Heights Beach. If we're able to use the Messina money for nourishing that beach, would it literally save the tax to pay is probably between forty and fifty thousand dollars. So after we get a ruling or an opinion on the uh, handicap ramp, which I think from reading what I've read so far will probably be okay, I, I've asked Julian if he would consider going to Frank and to reach out to the Messina group and check to see if that money could actually be used for nourishing another beach at no cost to the taxpayers. I mean, a lot of times we talk about grants, that is tax dollars. This happens to be a donation that's sitting in an account that, uh, um, you know, I did see, see an email from uh, Pat Harris saying that's more of maintenance, not enhancement. So that's why I think that may be turned down, but it, we still could reach out to them uh, and, you know, via the license to ask if Mr. Messina would consider changing because it's right in the license if both parties came together and agreed. So that's something Julian is one of my many things on my list that he's <laughs> looking into. Thank you, Madam Chair. Anything you can do Okay. Okay, oh. well, one thing that I did forget to mention at, earlier on in the meeting is that we were to have had a Bauer Wetland hearing that was supposed to have been continued for tonight um, from a few weeks ago. Uh, that was the one, I believe that's the Gunning Point hearing, is it not? Yes. But um, because Pat isn't here, and David wasn't at the original hearing. We've had to reschedule the uh, wetland hearing until May 14th, so that we will have at least four members of the board sitting on the um, at the hearing. And then, oh, I believe it was last week, I attended a, um, a meeting at the Woodsville Research Center with members of the Economic Sustainability um, Subcommittee for the. Um, local comprehensive plan and uh, we talked, we spoke with um, the Vice President and Director of Finance and Administration of the Woodsville Research Center and with another um, employee there about their goals for the future and um, trying to understand what their goals are and what Falmouth can do to help them or to help the scientific and technological communities and the educational communities in town um, move forward with sustainable growth with attracting younger families to town, attracting employees to town. Um, and it was it was a very hearty conversation. It lasted probably an hour and a half, maybe close to two hours. And it's, um, it's the first step in our scientific sector questionings. We're going to be meeting with um, the Marine Biological Labs, MBL, on Wednesday. And, um, and then in a couple of weeks, we also have a meeting set up with Huey. So we're moving forward and planning. I believe we're going to take a a pause in a couple of weeks with, from interviewing the scientific sector and um, sort of processing what, what information we're gathering and, and hope to move forward this summer with drafting some kind of um, rough draft for the local comprehensive plan for the economic development sector. So, but other than that, just been busy, busy. Um, Madam Chair, yes. there's one thing I did, I neglected to mention. Um, <coughs> this Saturday, the 28th, at the rec building from 10 to 2, you can bring in your unwanted uh, prescriptions from your home. A lot of people have asked me, you know, you don't go in there, they don't point fingers, they don't ask any questions, mm -hmm. you drop it off and that's it. So they're not going to be taking a name or anything. And so this is at the rec center, not at the police department? Absolutely. It's okay. at the rec center from 10 to 2 uh, this Saturday, 28th. Right. It's a good idea to, yeah. you don't have to flush them down don't the flush them. and get them into the water table and you don't have to have them hanging around Correct. Tempting, tempting neighbors. Correct. Okay. If that's all from the board, then I'll uh, turn to the town manager. Julian, do you have anything on the report we haven't approached yet today? Thank you, Madam Chair. The uh, board uh, may recall that earlier this year we received 
a concerned inquiry regarding a uh, non-working electrical and sound system in the green area in front of the uh, main library. <clears throat> I'm pleased to advise the board that DPW has restored uh, the system to full operation and has further modestly expanded the system to reduce the need somewhat for longer electrical connections, which can at times uh, present a safety issue. So I appreciate uh, our colleagues in Public Works uh, handling that prior to the busy season beginning. And uh, on Wednesday evening of this past week, uh, the selectman uh, David Brog has noted I was pleased to join him uh, at that beach committee meeting, and uh, we had a uh, you know very uh, informative dialogue and a uh, number of uh, very important things going on at that committee as well. Also, I uh, wanted to give a uh, brief update to the board. Uh, Public Works has advised that uh, uh, if all goes as anticipated on Thursday and Friday of this week, uh, Rivoli Construction uh, will be on site uh, to complete the final paving of the sections of the bike path uh, that were impacted by the sewer uh, force main rehabilitation project of this last fall and winter. That is uh, in the area of the bike path uh, uh, in Woods Hall between uh, the 1.5 and 2 mile marker uh, area. So we look forward to that wrapping up on Thursday and Friday. If weather is inclement, that may need to move to uh, the first two days of next week. Uh, but we, are, uh, we will be uh, advising the uh, press as we get closer if there would be any change in that. Also, uh, Madam Chair and members of the board, uh, uh, my wife Stephanie and I were uh, pleased to join uh, uh, in the uh, neighborhood cleanup organized by the Chamber of uh, Commerce in neighborhoods that began this past weekend, I believe they extend to this weekend, a number of uh, entities have stepped up uh, donating uh, materials and uh, disposal. Uh, it happened that uh, we did a section of Woods Hole Road, I picked up a section of Woods Hole Road, uh, the portion overlooking Little Harbor, and uh, we're pleased to join a number of other neighbors throughout the community uh, in doing that. And I certainly encourage others who are interested. Um, there's been quite a bit of um, press coverage on that. And as I recall, it does extend through the coming weekend. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Julie. Is there any other business to come before the board? If not, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, good night, everyone. Hi, I'm Pat Thatcher. I'm Margaret Gifford. We work for the global real estate company Sotheby's International Realty. Margaret, how long have you been in real estate? About 200 years. How about you? I'm um, coming up on it. What is the real estate market like right now, Margaret? Well, interest rates are very favorable. There's great inventory, and it is a good time for buyers and sellers. And you know, Falmouth is so wonderful. Not only is it a beautiful place, but there are so many outdoor activities, cultural events, and opportunities to volunteer. Isn't, isn't Falmouth, Falmouth great? great? Remember, WC Communications is your printing team. We are calm and cool under pressure. You can call us at 508-563-7366 or toll free at 1-800-696-7303.